This week on Jared Scott Outdoors, we're heading out after elk with archery gear. My favorite hunt of the year. There's just something about hearing elk bugle, watching them rake trees, and trying to pull them in for an opportunity that gets my heart pumping. Not to mention the incredible elk country we get to hunt in during these warmer months of September. There's a lot to show you, so let's get after it. Well, you can see the birds all flying south, but no, not me. Hey, I think I'll stick around Where the mountains touch the sky And a beast jumps for a fly Where the good Lord did his best Way out west Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors, your source in the field for local outdoor news. The first day we went out this year was the 5th of September, which was a very hot day. It was in the upper 90s in the Snake River Plain and felt about that hot up on the mountain as well. However, since the days we could hunt were limited, Mike Anderson, my daughter Abby, and I went out anyhow. We did see a couple does as we hiked to the area we hoped to see elk from and eventually just had to let them run off so we could hurry to the spot we wanted to be in. Continuing on ahead, we left the trail as we had to go straight up the mountain. It was a steep climb but would get us to a great spot for glassing. At one point as we caught our breath and gave our legs a rest, this grouse tried sneaking up to the next tree. We were seeing critters, hopefully that was a good omen. Well, finally making it to the top of the ridge, we were later than hoped, but it was still early enough. We sat down for a much needed break and started glassing. It didn't take too long to find a cow elk with a spike up the canyon a ways and another cow and spike across the canyon from us. It wasn't much, but it's all we could find. The trouble is, we also watched as hunters materialized nearby each pair of elk. The hunters we saw putting a sneak on these two elk were obviously working on getting a shot. This other group of hunters didn't seem to see the elk directly below them, so we hung tight for some time to see what would happen, and then after they left, we made a game plan. The problem was that it was such a hot day that once the elk went into cover, we didn't expect them to come back out for some time. We decided to just try to set up something, and so, Abby and Mike went up above uh, the first patch of trees and now I'm going to drop in and kind of work through them and possibly spook things up to them. A couple little draws, we're going to just work them, see if we can push some elk around, make something happen. It's all we got. Well, long story short, we saw nothing. And to make matters worse, it just got super windy. Combine that with the heat and we had a miserable hike out. All right, so today was really, really hot and kind of miserable compared to last year because last year was kind of the bomb. So, a little disappointment, but hopefully we get some action. Sure enough, a week later I was out again. However, I didn't have Mike or Abby with me, but another longtime hunting buddy, Troy Griffith. As the sky started to turn orange, we found ourselves high in the backcountry trying a new area. Within minutes of first light, I managed to bust several muley bucks in a meadow we were skirting, and then we spotted a couple groups of mountain goats high up on the cliffs above us. Because the nanny and kid goat were in such a cool place, we figured I better take advantage and pull out the spotting scope to get some good footage. They disappeared before I got it all out, but then Troy spotted elk that walked out of cover. As we put glass to the three elk, sure enough, they all had antlers. We couldn't believe our luck. Deer, goats, and now bull elk. All three of them were five-point bulls, with one of them being very impressive for a five-point. Fortunately for us, they were heading our direction. Well, sort of. They were dropping down the ridge they were on, but towards us. However, between us and them was a pretty deep draw that while it was open on the elk side, was a thick wall of trees on our side. If we had a rifle tag, no problem, but somehow we had to figure out how to get to them once they were out of sight, or at least get out in front of them. The other issue, however, was that we couldn't tell if they would come our way or keep going down the draw once they were out of sight. Run into uh, four bucks, four mountain goats, and uh, three decent bulls, all within 20 minutes, so, and the bulls are heading our way, so we'll see what happens. Once they were all out of sight, we hurried over to the wall of trees to see if we could get a better idea of our options. As we stood there looking down into the trees, we suddenly heard crashing. At first I thought the elk were busting through the thick timber our way, but we quickly realized they had caught us and were going back the way they'd come. 
We had no idea how they caught us so quick. Other than that, the wind was a little shifty right there and must have blown our scent right to them. As we watched the elk head back up, a few more elk walked out, including a very nice six point bull. Not knowing what was up, they just kind of fed over the ridge and out of sight, while the smaller bulls kept going all the way up and over the high ridge in front of us. We also watched the bigger of the bucks we'd seen at first light walk out into the open and bed up right below a tree. Once all the elk were out of sight again, we circled wide so we wouldn't spook that buck and tried to find the elk. But hiking all over the basin and checking every nook and cranny, they seemed to have just disappeared. Well, that was a pretty exciting morning um, to end on absolutely nothing. <laughs> but we did see a lot of animals. Elk just didn't work out. We tried to get in on one of the bedded up bucks that we found and it had moved on us and so it caught us when we tried to sneak in. But still fun to see that many animals between elk, deer, and mountain goats. Pretty cool morning. Oh, that's cool looking country, holy cow. With all the elk seemingly gone, we decided it was time to jump over to another drainage. That, of course, was no easy task. Hiking up and over the ridge and then side hilling on some mountain goat trails, we were able to get a peek into a couple good looking basins. Piece of cake, huh? Alright, so I spotted a bull in this canyon that we dropped down into to try to get him. But uh, it was pretty noisy to get down here. We're hoping that he didn't hear us. So we are now upwind of him. Everything's so quiet that we're going to just kind of set up and just do a few cow calls. See if we can't lure him up. But it uh, looked like a pretty good bull, so we'll just set up, be patient, see what happens. Putting Troy out in front, I stayed back and called. We slowly moved forward a little closer to where I expected the elk was, but after more than an hour, nothing. Not a single peep out of that bull. At one point, we bumped a cow and its calf, but we didn't see the bull leave. Since we didn't know if he was there or not anymore, we just decided to make a move on him. Setting Troy up where the cow elk had spooked, I went on the other side and just walked on in where I thought he'd been. Just as I had decided he must have been long gone, it stood up only 25 yards in front of me. You can't see him because he was on the other side of the trees in front of me. I don't know if he winded me or hurt me, but he was close and trying to figure out what to do. If he'd just take two steps to my right, he'd be wide open. I let out a few cow calls, hoping that would make him curious enough to take those two critical steps. As they seem to do so often, that bull walked directly away from me, keeping the trees in the way. It wasn't all lost. I hoped now that he would head towards Troy. This could still work out. I hurried over to where the bull had disappeared and actually saw him for a brief second cross the basin far below. Troy had seen him, but he was too far away from him as well. It's close. I was just about drawn back on him. After six in the evening, after we had just crossed over another big basin on our way back towards the trailhead, we heard distant bugles, and looking back from where we'd just come from, we saw an entire herd of elk with a very aggressive bull rounding up cows. As you can see, it was still windy, but we sat and contemplated a run at the bull, but decided that in reality, with the limited time we had before dark, going after that elk might have to wait for another day. We'd hunt the remaining hours back towards the truck instead of further away. While we didn't find more elk, we did find several more mountain goats. However, the surprise came as we were watching some up on the cliffs above us and a nanny and its kid fed out from behind a tree just 20 yards away from us. It was actually very cool to be so close without it appearing to have noticed us. I bet we watched it for nearly 10 minutes. It was actually the kid goat that was most observant and that eyed us with distrust when it looked our way. Now this was the closest I've been to wild mountain goats. And as I watched this kid goat, I had to mention to Troy that it had to be the oddest shaped animal. However, my guess is that it's that stocky body with relatively short legs that make these guys so sure-footed when scaling literal cliffs that would scare most grown men if they were climbing them. 
Keeping with all the animal sightings, the next day was very uneventful for Troy and I as far as elk go. But we did get in close to several deer with a handful of bucks. However, the bucks were all two and three pointers that just didn't quite have the size that gave us a desire to send an arrow their way. We had them in range for a while as they had seen us, but at times relaxed again as we stayed motionless. It wasn't until we just went ahead and showed ourselves that they realized the threat was real and they headed for higher ground in a hurry. We may not have got an elk, but I'll tell you what, over the last two days, Troy and I sure saw a lot of animals and had a good time. With all the animals, and especially elk, that Troy and I saw, the following weekend when Nathan and I went out, we headed back for the same area. However, this time, it was totally different. We did see plenty of mountain goats above us in the cliffs, but the elk were gone. Apparently, all the hunting pressure had pushed them out. It just did. We did end up seeing several other hunters, and so we finally, out of desperation, saw this mountain goat trail going up over this nasty stuff and it's like well let's go look into that canyon it looks like it's a nasty canyon too but we got nothing better and then we'll just from there it would work us we can work back to the truck hopefully if it was manageable but anyways we popped over sure enough we saw an elk right off the bat and uh and then saw a few more so i pulled up the spotting scope let me show you what we're looking at so here's the first bull we found. When we first spotted it, it was bedded up, but then it got up to get rid of some aggression by destroying this little tree. There were also a handful of cows we could see bedded up here and there among the trees. As we watched this bull, we noticed it was a solid six pointer. While it wasn't a real wide bull, it had great main beam length, meaning its overall antler length was pretty impressive. Definitely a bull that got us excited. Then down the hill a couple hundred yards was a very vocal bull. This bull was bugling non-stop and was feeding with an additional half dozen cows. While it didn't look nearly as big, Looking it seemed right. to be way more aggressive compared to that other bull. We've got two groups of elk, so maybe we've found where they've kind of been pushed. Um, it's a good sign. Well, we had found the elk, but we quickly realized getting in on them was going to be tough. Not just because of the rough country, but we had no cover. After dropping off the ridge, we found our trees we were in for cover disappeared, and we were left with a giant rock slide between us and them. We literally had nowhere we could go that didn't put us out in the wide open. At first, while we started working down using the limited bit of cover we had, the elk bedded back up facing away from us. But about the time we got to the last tree we had for cover, it got back up and raked on a tree again. We just kind of hunkered down, hoping it would go follow the other elk that had now fed over the crest of the hill. If it would just follow them, we'd be able to cross this rock slide and then have a chance. Well, instead, it stood there forever, it seemed like raking this tree. And here it showed us one good use for those long antlers, getting an itch that's just hard to get. When it finally did leave, and we thought it would follow the other elk and we'd be good to go, instead it just bedded down again, this time bedding up facing us, which obviously didn't make it easy for us to sneak in. We were really stuck now. Eventually the bull got up and walked over the ridge, but now we were left with only about an hour of daylight, so we had to move and move fast. We went right to crossing the rock slide and just hoped the elk wouldn't hear us as we walked over the noisy rocks. Just as we were closing in on the edge of the rocks, elk started coming back over the ridge on our side. But now we had at least a few trees to use as cover, and so we were able to continue sneaking in closer to the elk that we could see. At this point, we were probably as close as we could get, because we had several cows scattered out on the other side of the trees, some of them bedded up, some of them just feeding. As we expected, a bull did come over to the area with the cows. It wasn't one of the bigger bulls, but that's all right. We'd take him just the same. <coughs> With daylight running out, we didn't have any time to spare. I went ahead and made a few scraggly bull calls to try to get his attention and to let him know that he had some competition. <coughs> At first, he just walked off. But then from behind the trees, we heard him bugling and coming on in for a better look.
When it did walk out, he was still out of range, but not by a ton. He was only about 90 yards off and still acting interested. If we could just get him turned and coming our way, this might happen. Instead, after a few minutes, he just started feeding and actually going further away. And then it fed towards some cows further below. However, then another bull showed up. This crazy antlered bull had a couple eye guards, but then nothing else on the main beams as they stretched out another three feet. So now we had two bulls in the mix, but unfortunately, this new bull was more interested in the cows nearby than us. They kept looking our way as I called, but there's no beating the real thing. And so with our daylight nearly gone, we decided it was better just to try to back out with plans on returning in the morning. Well, it didn't work out this time. We got over here a little. It took us a while because of the terrain and how open it was. But we got back, we got into them a little bit, but they just never came close enough to seal the deal. As you can see, we're seeing animals. We were just having a tough time getting in close. However, I'm now out of time with a lot more footage to show you. So we'll have to follow this up next week. And as a little hint of what's to come, we'll be notching at least one tag on a nice bull. Stay tuned. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the Jared Scott Outdoors YouTube channel.